Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a spiral pattern in Adobe Photoshop. If you'd like the design files for this tutorial, be sure to check out my Patreon page where I upload all of the uh, design files for um, all of my tutorials here on YouTube. If you'd like to uh, support this channel, go ahead and check that out and I will leave a link to uh, my Patreon page in the description below. To start off with, let's go ahead and create a new file here. I'm going to use the dimensions of 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels. Leaving artboards unselected, we have resolution set to 300 pixels per inch, color mode is RGB color, and then background content set to transparent, and then just click on create. From here, I'm going to add a grid layout. So we're going to go to view new guide layout and I'm going to have my column set to 10 and my rows set to 10 and then just click on OK. Uh, from here just gonna change my default colors by hitting D on the keyboard to get black as my foreground and then I'm going to use the pen tool. I'm gonna right click here uh, pen tool it's also P for the keyboard shortcut. Uh, with the pen tool selected we are going to start with this center point here and then I'm just going to click to add some points here as we notice we have our filled shape so I'm going to change that I'm going to put no fill and then we are going to add a black stroke I'm going to bring this up to 40 pixels here and then we will continue uh, to create our spiral effect to start off with, they're just going to be uh, straight lines, and then we will go back in and turn them into curves. So we'll just continue our way around using our guides to help us. And then I'm just going to right click here. Let's grab our curvature pen tool. And then with this uh, point selected, just double click, and it will turn into a curve. And we will continue to do that around the circle here until we've turned all of these points into a curve. Just double clicking here. Okay, we have our fun spiral here. Accessing the move tool, I'm gonna hit V on the keyboard and then we're just gonna size it down here a little bit. Clicking OK. I'm going to go ahead and convert this shape into a smart object. Smart objects are good because it will retain its uh, pr properties as it is right now. And now we can do make adjustments, change the sizing and different things like that. And it will continue to preserve this original um, shape. So let's go ahead and turn off our guides. We'll go to view clear canvas guides here. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring the size down here again. We'll just bring it a little bit smaller, aligning it to the center here. And then we'll go ahead and click on OK. Zooming out of my canvas command or control with the minus key. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this. So let's duplicate this layer, command J and then we will bring it out to the corner here. Let's go ahead and turn on our pattern preview mode. So we'll go to view pattern preview and then we'll just bring this to the corner here. With the pattern preview mode turned on, we can go ahead and define our pattern. So we'll go to edit, define pattern, and then you can give it a name and then just click on OK. Here in my patterns panel, I have it showing up here. Let's go ahead and test this pattern. We'll go to file new. This time I'm going to use the dimensions of digital scrapbook paper, which is 3600 pixels by 3600 pixels. We'll leave artboard selected. We'll have our resolution set to 300, and then we'll leave all the settings the same and just click on create. From here, I'm going to use uh, one of my actions here uh, with my uh, pattern action set, and it's called pattern test. And basically, it will bring up a color fill layer, a pattern fill layer, and then another color fill layer that has a clipping mask to our pattern. And then I will just select our newly created pattern here. So we can see uh, the repeat. When you click on this pattern fill layer, you have the option to uh, scale your pattern. Let's try scaling it down a little bit. Maybe we'll go 75% here. 
And then uh, when this dialog box is open, you always have the option to uh, rearrange the way you orient your pattern here. If you want to get back to the original, just click on Snap to Origin, and then we'll go ahead and click on OK. With these color fill layers, you have the option to change the color. So let's just pick a couple colors here from my swatch panel. And we have this uh, fun two tone pattern here. If we jump back into our swatch here, I'm going to go uh, to this middle one here and I'm going to uh, flip it. So let's go to edit, transform, and we are going to uh, flip this vertically. And then let's go ahead and define this one again. So we'll go edit, define pattern, clicking on OK. And then we'll go ahead and jump back into our other file here. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit and then we are going to access the artboard tool. So I'm going to go shift V. You'll notice it's here under the move tool. You have the artboard tool with this open. I'm going to go ahead and click on this layer here. I have the option to add a artboard by clicking on the plus icon. I'm going to go ahead and undo that command or control Z. You also have the option, making sure this artboard is selected, you can go Option, click for Mac users, Alt click for PC, and you will just go click to drag it to the side and it will create a duplicate of that artboard here. Uh, let's go ahead and rename this. I'm just gonna go uh, one pattern, bringing it to the top here, and then the second one will be two pattern. And then we will test out our second pattern here. So we'll select our next one and then let's go ahead and give it some different colors. As uh, selecting from my swatch panel here, we'll add some new colors and we can just see uh, the variation between the two patterns when we add in that flipping it vertical. If we want to make it a little bit different, we'll jump back into our swatch panel here. I'm going to open up my smart object. In the smart object here, I'm going to get rid of those guides as well, clear canvas guides. And then I want to rotate it. So I'm going to extend the bounds of my canvas here. So we're going to go to image, canvas size. I'm going to uh, bring up my height here. Let's go ahead and just go um, 1100 pixels here and then we'll just do the same for this one as well. Clicking on OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. So Command or Control T and then I'm going to uh, rotate this. Let's try it at 90 degrees here and then clicking on OK. I'm going to save this Command or Control S and then Command or Control W, and then it will just change uh, the orientation of our spiral here. Let's go ahead and define this again. Edit, define pattern, clicking on OK, and we'll jump back over here, and then let's change that one here, and now we see it oriented differently on our pattern here. I'm gonna go ahead and jump back in to my swatch here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off pattern preview mode. We're going to go to view pattern preview. Uh, with this middle copy, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. I'm going to bring back out my original one here and I'm going to uh, create another pattern. This time I'm going to use one of my actions that I've created uh, with my action pack. Uh, this is with my uh, dot set coming to my actions here. I'm going to turn off button mode minimizing these folders here. And then I'm gonna go to my dot patterns. I'm gonna open that one up. And I'm gonna do one of my uh, two-tone patterns here. So before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and make this object a little bit smaller here, clicking on OK. With the object selected, I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my actions here, and I'm gonna go ahead and push play. It has created a repeating pattern here. Uh, what we see is that my shape is still a little bit too large. So I'm gonna double click into this smart object. And then uh, from here, I'm going to scale it down. So I'm gonna go Command or Control T. And then making sure that this maintain aspect ratio is selected. I'm going to bring this down. Let's try 80% here, clicking on OK. And then I'm gonna save this, Command or Control S, Command or Control W, 
and now we have it a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and test this. I may want to make it a little bit smaller, but we'll go to edit uh, define pattern here. We'll change up this one here. And as we can see, um, let's make this larger again. And then it just makes this fun uh, two tone effect here. And I am going to uh, make my shape smaller. So I'll double click in here, command or control T. Let's scale it down uh, one more time. Let's go smaller, 80% here, command or control save, command or control W to close it. And then we'll go to edit, define pattern, clicking on okay. And then we'll jump back over here and test out our pattern here. So zooming in, we can see a nice uh, two tone effect uh, with this spiral pattern. Zooming back out here. So we have two uh, digital papers here. If I wanted to uh, save them, I'm gonna go to File, Export, Export As. When you use artboards, you have the option to save multiple artboards at the same time. It's a really nice feature when it comes to uh, saving, saving these files out. So I'm gonna just click on, Command click on both of these layers here. Under suffix here, you can add some additional detail to your name. As we see here, the artboard name is shown here, and that is how Photoshop will save it. If we add a suffix here, if I go dash spiral, it will be added to the end of these file names. Under file settings, I can hit the drop down arrow, and in this case, I'm going to select JPEG because I'm saving it as digital scrapbook paper. And then generally for a uh, digital scrapbook paper, you want high quality, uh, so you can bring this up. Uh, just make a note that the higher the quality, the larger the file size here. And then we'll just scroll down I, under color space. I like to make sure embed color profile is selected. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and click to export. Uh, go ahead and navigate to your folder and then just click on open to save it. Uh, bringing up my folder here, I can see that I have both of these uh, files saved for my two artboards and that we have that added spiral added to the end. We can click on it and see our file here. Double click to open it and we have our digital scrapbook paper here. Thank you for watching this video on how to create this fun spiral pattern in Adobe Photoshop. Again, if you want access to all the design files for my tutorials, then you can join me over on Patreon. I will leave a link to it in the description below. Thank you for the support. It helps me to keep making these tutorials. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. In this video, I use some of my Photoshop actions and I will leave a link to where you can get them below in the description. Be sure to check out my other tutorials on how to design and create patterns in Photoshop. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.